an interesting graphic on Zero Hedge, visualizing the state of the central bank digital currencies. And they've got all the different countries of the world and uh, what their current uh, situation is, whether they have launched a central bank digital currency, whether they're researching it, whether they've started a pilot program, uh, whether it's in development, or whether it is inactive or canceled. And um, it was this map was put together with uh, data from the Atlantic Council's currency tracker, because again, the Atlantic Council, NATO, these people, they're the ones who are pushing uh, central bank digital currencies. There will eventually be one currency to rule them all. It'll be a global currency. Uh, 105 countries are currently exploring centralized digital currencies, and together they represent 95% of global GDP. In other words, the ones who are not doing it only account for 5% of economic activity. 9% of the countries have launched a digital currency to date, and uh, this includes Nigeria, which became the first African country to do so in October 2021. I guess they just didn't have, we weren't making enough money with that Nigerian prince scam. So they came up with something that was a much bigger scam. Uh, half of the country's 200 million people, however, are believed to have no access to bank accounts. And so this uh, e-Naira is what they call their uh, central bank digital currency. The adoption of that has been pretty sluggish. Uh, they only had 700,000 downloads, even though the country has 200 million people. <laughs> And uh, they said that's equivalent to 0.35% of the population. Uh, though even not all the download users are Nigerian. So uh, it's even less than that in terms of the population. Conversely, 33.4 million Nigerians were reported to be trading or owning crypto assets despite the Central Bank of Nigeria's attempts to restrict usage. So that's about 17% of the population, let's say. So 17% versus 0.35%. Crypto versus central bank digital currency. They're not interested. And uh, so in the U.S., just as a reminder, a week from today is when all of the federal bureaucracies are due to have the report back to our emperor, uh, Biden. You know, he, by executive order, you know, he orders everybody. So he ordered them six months ago. He said in 180 days, uh, and it was... March 9th or something like that. Um, but I, I calc by my calculations, the reports are all due a week from today. And it was every bureaucracy you can imagine and some that you didn't know exist, all talking about what they were going to do to usher in CBDC. And then last week, we had the House Finance Committee, bipartisan move. This is a committee that is chaired, of all things, by Maxine Waters. You know we're in deep trouble when the finance committee is chaired by Maxine Waters. <laughs> Who does her checkbook? Uh, well, actually, her husband is deeply embedded in the uh, banking industry um, to be able to tap into the money. I don't think he's... I would be surprised if he actually <laughs> knows anything about banking, but he knows how to get the money. That's what he knows. Anyway, uh, this, this committee chaired by Maxine Waters, Republicans as well as Democrats were sounding the alarm. We cannot afford to fall behind China and CBDC. Mr. President, we can't have a CBDC gap. Well, we got to jump into this thing here. So uh, that report is due out next week, and they're already laying the foundation by having Republicans and Democrats telling us that we got to act now. It's a bipartisan demand to act now. It's an emergency. You got to do it now. We can't stop and think about this. Just like everything else. Everything else is rushed through with emergency. I mean, just look at the way they pass their bills. You know, thousands of pages. They drop them. We only got 24 hours to do this. You have no time to read it and analyze it. Just sign your name on the dotted line because we said so. Everything is done that way. Everything is done that way. Uh, so, again, I will point out to you, and um, uh, I said this Last week, when I was interviewing um, Joe Bannister um, and um, uh, what was the name of his uh, website? Agent for Truth. Agent for Truth. Yeah. Thank you. Agentfortruth.com. Uh, Joe Bannister was one of the criminal investigation IRS agents 
as part of his investigation, started looking at what some of these tax protesters were saying. And he said, ah, well, that's interesting. I mean, he's, he's got a background in law enforcement, a background in accounting, which is what these people have. He goes, hmm. Well, uh, he goes back to his people. He says, so, so what's the answer to this? Shut up. You're not, and then, you know, they kick him out rather than giving him an answer. Uh, so when I was talking to him, I said, you know, it occurs to me that these 87,000 new IRS agents are going to be used to push central bank digital currency and to investigate people who are involved in crypto and to try to take away, you know, those assets. I think that's really what it's going to be involving. That's how I think it's going to be used, but you should also take a look at the person that Biden has now chosen to lead the 87,000 new IRS agents. Uh, the IRS official chosen to lead the new centralized office that will feature the 87,000 new employees uh, for the IRS is someone who is involved in the agency's targeting of conservative groups that opposed Obama's reelection in 2012. Remember that story coming out of the IRS? Remember that? Uh, yeah, we're going to shut them down. We're not going to let these uh, groups uh, get authorization to operate and other things like that. Nicole Flax is the person. Uh, so I guess some, somebody said, we've got to get some, <laughs> some Flacky to, to run this thing. Oh, Nicole Flax, uh, get her. She served as chief of staff for then acting IRS Commissioner Stephen Miller, who was fired uh, over the cover-up of the scandal. When Republican lawmakers sought communications related to the scandal in the investigation, her emails were among those the agency claimed were lost in a computer hard drive crash. Remember that? We all talked about that. We said, yeah, um, yeah, the computer ate my data. Uh, does the IRS buy that excuse if they want to audit you? No, no. But if you want to audit the IRS, I'm sorry, the dog ate my, or the computer ate my homework. IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick said in an email to employees that the agency will establish a new centralized office uh, including the 80, to include the 87,000 new agents. And uh, in the email, he said that it will be Nicole Flax, Deputy Commissioner in charge of the Large Business and International Division that will lead the establishment of the centralized office, international and large business. That is another indication to me that's going to be focused on crypto, and on CBDC. By the way, I just want to I'll mention, too, uh, gold. You want to get into gold? <laughs> um, DavidKnight.gold is graciously set up by Tony Ardman. It will take you to him, let you know that uh, you came through me. And uh, he can help you to get physical gold. Um, I had uh, somebody send me an uh, email that was out of the U.K. and said, uh, I'm assuming it'll be too expensive to ship. I don't know. Uh, but, um, he said, uh, if that's not the case, uh, can you or Tony let me know, uh, somebody that you would recommend? I'll contact Tony, but I don't, I don't know if he knows anybody in the UK, uh, that he would recommend, but, um, but I'll ask just to, to find out, but I do recommend Tony. Uh, I trust him. I've used him in the past and he's been a, uh, a great friend to the program. And he also knows where all this stuff is, but he's had a lot, a lot of people have used him and a lot of people have, uh, sent uh, comments about how much they appreciate uh, what he did. The common man. They created common core to dumb down our children. They created common past to track and control us. Their commons project to make sure the commoners own nothing and the communist future. They see the common man as simple, unsophisticated, ordinary. But each of us has worth and dignity created in the image of God. That is what we have in common. That is what they want to take away. Their most powerful weapons are isolation, deception, intimidation. They desire to know everything about us while they hide everything from us. It's time to turn that around and expose what they want to hide. Please share the information and links you'll find at thedavidnightshow.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. If you can't support us financially, please keep us in your prayers. TheDavidKnightShow.com.